The Fashna event is lasting one more week and with so many rare rewards to collect, I feel like some tips and tricks might help you make the most out of the Fashna day. So let's begin. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. I have created an event walkthrough last year with pretty much all the essentials about the Fasnacht Parade. It still applies, so if you don't know exactly what to do, you can still check it out. Now, as days pass by, less and less players seem to be interested in the Fasnacht Day event, and that's normal. It happened last year and it's happening in 2020 as well, but better Bethesda has extended the event until June 9, which means you have plenty of time to collect all the rewards you want. As such, I have gathered over a dozen of tips and tricks to help you solo the event or farm the event even better and faster. These tips will help you save time, effort and well, increase your chances to get 1% rare masks and all the plants. Without any further delay, let's start with the first tip. There is one event per fixed hour, it's when the Fasnacht day starts, but it's possible to do several events per hour, as you surely know by now. If you have an empty friends list though, then you have to rely on luck a little bit. After finishing your first event, go to the main menu and join another server. If you are lucky enough, you will find the Fasnacht day about to end and you can get the rewards all the same in this other server. You can server jump a few times using this strategy. Remember, some groups are slower than others to complete the event. Anyway, if you have friends with private servers, you can easily find the event after you have completed it in a public server. Normally, I do two to three in public servers where the last two are basically leeching. Oh well, what can you do? And then I move on to my own private server or join friends on their own private worlds. This means you can easily do two to five events per hour and create some sort of loop. By the time you are done with five events, the next hour is about to hit the clock and you can start the farming cycle all over again if you want. I did this in the first three days and managed to get almost every single plan and the masks I wanted apart from the 1% of course. It is tired some and tedious but it works really well and I think this is the fastest way to get everything you could hope for from the seasonal event. When you are doing the event solo for whatever reason, for example, I have been finding a lot of people just standing still at the spawn or running around not knowing exactly what to do, so it's always handy to understand the event and knowing what must be done depending on the tasks you get. So here's where you can find all the 8 NPCs for this event. Remember, only 5 NPCs spawn per event out of 8 possibilities. Let's start near the restaurant in the patio to the left of the bridge, that's where the musician can spawn. Then inside the restaurant it is itself, you can find the baker behind the counter. Now, moving past the bridge at the hotel, you can find the butcher near the kitchen. In the next red building, you can find the decorator. Now, if you move into the cabins, you can find the historian inside the cabin with decorations in front of the decorations house. If you keep moving towards the river at the honey house, you can find the beekeeper. Finally, on the other side of the town, near the church, you can find the woodsman just in front of the church entrance. And then at the mail post house, it's where the candle maker can spawn behind the counter. Now that you know where all the NPCs can spawn, where you must check, let's go on and see how to complete their tasks. Okay, let's exclude the musician first because all you have to do is play the nearby instruments. Also, the woodsman is quite obvious. There is wood everywhere around Elvetia, especially behind the restaurant. There's like 10 piles of wood at least. Okay, so following the previous order for the baker, you need eggs, which you can find alongside the river 
inside egg clusters pretty straightforward i would say moving forward for the intestines you can find critters around the hotel or near the cabins they respawn quite fast so you shouldn't have any problems finding enough of them for the stains there is a huge cluster near the decoration in hotel houses in the main road and near the restaurant as well i usually find 10 in these spots when it comes to kill the honey beasts, they take a while to spawn and they generally spawn behind the cheese house, so make sure to check it there. Lastly, for the candle maker, you need bee wax, which you can find outside and inside the honey house, which is, well, near the small bridge behind the restaurant. And that's everything you need to know in order to complete the eight different tasks. I know this point might seem irrelevant, but it's not. Here's why. If you start late, your chances to find other events still going will be less. In this case, half a minute can make the difference to join another server in time. So make sure to get the event started right away when it unlocks every fixed hour. Also, don't wait for others to do the tasks for you. There are a lot of leeches and alts who just joined the event for the rewards so make sure to do the tasks yourself if you want things to go as quickly as possible. The quicker you do the event, the quicker you can server jump to get even more rewards. Now, let's talk a little bit about perks. There's quite a few you can use to speed up the entire event, such as stamina perks. Yep, you need to run a lot to complete the five tasks. Sometimes you have to go back and forward across the entire town. So I highly advise you to equip the action girl or boy and the marathoner perks to ensure you will never run out of stamina. The woodchunker perk in luck is super useful as well when you are soloing events because you get way more wood per gathering. You can also get wood from your stash if you want. Finally, the buttress bounty can save you lots of time as well since you can get more intestines per critter, which means you need to kill less critters in the end. Together, all these perk effects can give you the upper hand and the chance to finish the event faster. If you often do the event with friends, then make sure to use and share utility perks in Charisma, such as squad maneuvers to run 20% faster, it makes a lot of difference, trust me, as well as the strange in numbers to boost each other's mutations, which can increase your speed even further, depending on the mutations you have, of course. The faster you move, the faster you can complete the tasks and get the parade moving. Just saying. Alright, another useful trick related to perks is the ability to heal the NPCs and always ensure you access the best rewards possible from the event. If one robot dies, just one, you can't get a new rare masks, for example. So here's the trick. Use a fire weapon such as a saber or shish kebab. You can easily mod it to make it fiery. And don't forget to equip the charisma perk friendly fire. Then you can hit friendly targets targets to heal them. It does take a little bit, but the HP bar goes up pretty quickly as you can see. So if you are soloing the event and suddenly your NPCs are off HP, it's a great idea to heal them before they die in the next wave. Without this trick, I would lose at least one of my robots every time I'm soloing the event, so it is a lifesaver in the end. You should definitely try it too, especially if you are doing this solo. Next, we have another tip that might also sound irrelevant to you, but it's not. Not everyone uses a rifle build, so you might prefer melee weapons, shotguns or even energy weapons. But all of these can easily let you down during the Fashnaf parade. You need a long range weapon with a high fire rate to do this solo. For the frog waves, it's alright, you can use whatever you want, but for the second wave with the ranged and suicide super mutants, 
you must kill them from far away and as quickly as possible because if they reach your robots and explode near them you can easily lose one or several of them to the explosions so make sure to use a rifle or a heavy weapon like a 50 call for this purpose only at least when you are soloing it's the easiest and safest way to protect the parade when it comes to the legendary mega slot at the end it has two different spawns one to the right and one to the left of the mail house behind it the thing is people often won't hit the mega slot denying a legendary item caps screws and other items to everybody else so make sure to use a weak weapon to hit it like a shotgun or a pistol from afar this way nobody will be upset and curse you in voice everybody should be happy if they get to hit it once and claim their loot. At the very end of the event, there is a trick to quickly see your event rewards. How? Access your quick or favorite bar, select a weapon, do it over and over until you skip the event completion animation. You can get several legendary items from the Fashnach day, so you need to do two to four skips before the event rewards list finally appears in your screen. I hope this helps you understand if you got what you wanted, instead of waiting about one minute for all the loot animations to display on their own. You can always ignore the rewards and server jump right away to find the next event, but then, who knows, maybe you already looted that rare item you wanted and you don't know about it yet. Private worlds seem to have an event spawn rate of their own. Seriously, I sometimes find the Fashna up in my private server 20 or 30 minutes into the hour. Sometimes I check it only 15 minutes into the hour and there is no event anymore. I had friends complaining about the same issue, it's really strange. In fact, sometimes I find events in private worlds 20 minutes before the fixed hour. Like, what? Makes no sense, right? It could be related to different time zones and people's personal servers, but still, I suspect there is a bug, at least on my end. So my best advice here is to always check your private server if you have one. You never know what you may find there. Also, don't forget to open your world, otherwise friends cannot join to help you speed up the event. If you have a lot of plans and masks, why not trade and share with your friends? It weights you down and you will probably end up dropping them at some point anyway. The player vending machines are not even live yet, so remember sharing is caring. Plus, you might end up finding something you didn't learn just yet. Another thing you can do is trade rare masks. If someone has a duplicate or wants the mask you got, you never know. Sometimes all you have to do is ask. Before you sell or scrape the event legendary items, make sure to check what you have in your inventory. Why? Because you can loot basically anything from this event as long as you have learned the plans in the past. I have recently got a couple of secret agency armor pieces as well as lots of bloodied and explosive weapons. I also have friends who looted a few handmaids and even bare hands. Some of the items are low level, that's true, but some are also high level and that's worth a lot of money. I managed to get a bloodied shotgun level 50 and I was about to script it because I had no idea I even had it to start with. So keep an eye on your loot and inventory. Well, it's bugs time. I must confess that the Fashnah day has quite some bugs. Sometimes the event interface won't show up and you have no idea what tasks are there to be done. You can fix this by fast traveling to another location and joining the event again. No need to relog or anything. Another known bug is when you find a new NPC. You often need to click on them many times until it registers. The same goes when the delivering task items. Sometimes I deliver once and it does nothing, so make sure to spam for these two issues. 
Now, while server jumping to find new events, the server often takes a long time to fully load when the event is active, which means your stats will be messed up, you will be level 1, your HP bar won't register any radiation, you can't equip weapons, and so on. This bug can last over 1 minute sometimes, and it is extremely annoying, especially when it says you are over-encumbered. Well, at least you can get the event rewards, there is no way around this one, just wait until everything is fully loaded, and that's it. <laughs> Lastly, there is a lot of griefing happening with the seasonal event. Normally, you will just find bored people trying to be funny, I do that sometimes myself too, but things can easily get out of hand these days. There's three main forms of griefing right now, nuking Helvetia in the middle of the event to try and kill people and deny them the possibility to finish. Gladly you can complete the event even if the area is nuked, just wait outside the circle for the nuke to land and then return inside with a hazmat suit or a power armor. Secondly, we have the mini nuke and hacked weapon spam, which will destroy your ears and give you a lot of lag. It's annoying, but again, you can still go past the grief. Just take off your headset or mute the sound of the game. Make sure to report the griefers too, that's very important. Lastly, we have the power armor frame blocking the parade trajectory. I have had dozens of complaints about this one and I'm not sure how to go around it. I have never seen it personally and I heard the event gets bugged, so there is probably nothing you can do about this one, sadly. Again, make sure to report the griefers and well, best to just join another server. I hope you got to learn something new with these tips and tricks for the Fashnah day. I know it's difficult to get rear masks, but it's not impossible. I recently looted two of them and all I can say is that it was about time. I mean, I have done around or probably over 100 events by now, but the great news here is that you have one more week to farm as much as you want. I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching, consider leaving a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Also, if you have any doubts or something to share, feel free to leave a comment below. You can also support me even further if you would like to, the links are always below the video. Now it's time to wrap things up here, I will see you all very very soon in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!